Okay, now we're going to cover the most common bad lighting situations, the ones that are really challenging that we face a lot, and how we can improve our results using those. And we'll have a couple of assignments that will be aimed at that. Let's look at too much contrast problem. There are a lot of situations where a contrast is too great for our cameras to record the scene. And in this scene, the highlight area is about a thousand times brighter than the shadow. So on the right hand side, the best man at uh, my daughter's wedding was from Ireland. So he's got very pale skin and he's in the sun. Not a good choice because a bridesmaid is black and she's in the shadow. So she has about 25 foot candles of light on her and he has about 2,400 foot candles on him. And there is no way that you'll be able to get both of them with the proper exposure. So you can see here that this is the scale of the photograph and the deepest shadows are down there by about 50 or 25 foot candles. And up at the very right is bright sunlight, 8,000 foot candles. And he's actually in bright sunlight. There's a skylight direct sunlight hitting him. The way to solve this is, um, well, I just went around and waited until they were coming back from the podium. And so now they both have the same lighting on them and they are backlit by that sun that was so troublesome. And you can see that we have great shadow detail in his light skin. We even see a little shadow detail in his collar and her hair and the dress both have detail. Huge difference from this, right? So the setup of the photograph has a lot to do with it. Also, you'll notice a very, very subtle shadow under her chin and his chin. I, I'm using my pop-up flash to further brighten the shadows and to even out the light between them. So here is Another common problem, the second most common problem with exposure, and that's backlighting. Okay, so same pretty girl, different hairstyle, and she is in front of brightly lit curtains. There are three common ways to solve this problem. One solution is to eliminate as much of the bright background as possible by moving in a lot closer, and you will find that the subject will be properly exposed just by eliminating a bright background. So the second solution is using the master control. You can override the camera's light meter to brighten the image. So in the left, we see she is a silhouette. I've moved in closer and I've changed the overall exposure to an adjustment of plus three. On your cameras, you're going to see a master exposure control. It looks like a plus and a negative. It's going to be very, very small button, and you can use that to brighten up the overall image. In this case, the background details are completely lost, and you actually get a little uh, wrap around of Ashley's face. I think it's kind of a, it's a nice look, and that is accomplished by going to plus three in this particular situation. You can see that it's a big difference. Now, plus three is a big exposure difference. Plus one is twice as much light. Uh, plus two is four times as much light. And plus three is eight times as much light. But that's what we needed to make this photograph work. So let's look for the master exposure control on your camera. If you're in automatic, this will not work. It's just ineffectual. And when you are using the button, there'll be a exposure scale that you can refer to. On the left is what the Canon exposure scales look like. And on the right is what the Nikon exposure scales look like. The zero position, the center position, is no adjustment at all. But when you move your control wheel to one direction or another, you will find that the exposure will brighten or darken depending on which way you move it. One thing I want to say about this, it's a very convenient way to immediately adjust the exposure when you're in the P mode really, really quick. You don't really have to think about anything. 
shutter speed, aperture, ISO, nothing. Because the camera will just do whatever it has available to it to change the exposure. And it could use all three. It uh, could use shutter, aperture, and ISO, or just one or two. Whatever it takes to make a lighter picture. You want to always have it back at the zero position after you've used it. Because if you don't remember to zero the control, um, all your pictures are going to be either too light or too dark, and you won't know why, and you'll send your camera in and for a $150 correction at the repair facility, and the guy will look at it and just reset that, uh, wrap it up, and send it back to you. Okay, now uh, we're going to do some other exposure adjustments. If it's sunny outside, we're going to do the lens flare correction. You'll see that there's a lens flare in the upper left. I've put my hand in the lower right photograph to block that. So if it is sunny, we'll do this assignment. Um, you can see that when direct light strikes your lens, it causes a lens flare. The uh, one on the left has no lens shade and so there's a bad lens flare but when I move in get rid of the background and I use my lens shade suddenly I'm getting an improved image on your left uh, that's what a lens shade looks like if you don't have a lens shade you can use your hand or a hat or whatever to cast a shadow on your camera okay now next we're gonna do the flash control and open shade. We'll have a diagram on how to complete this assignment. There's a lot of photographs in this assignment, so just bear with me. Uh, we're going to solve the high contrast lighting problem and also the backlighting problem with the use of your camera flash. It's a very effective tool to use outdoors in bright sunlight. So the, pl the flash can improve contrasty lighting. A picture of my wife on the left, you see that the highlight side of her face is really burned up and the shadow side is too dark. She's about two arm lengths away. I use my pop-up flash. Uh, I take the same picture and it adds light to the shadow side of her face and really it's not a great photograph but it's a greatly improved photograph. You can also see that in her eyes uh, there's a highlight right where her pupil is. That's the, that's the camera flash. So uh, combining your flash with sunny conditions can create some amazing results. Using your flash as a secondary source, not a primary source, that's called fill flash. Digital SLR cameras often have a button that turns on the flash, but it won't work in the auto mode. So switch to the P mode and you'll be able to control the flash. Look on your camera body for a lightning bolt button. Press that and your flash will pop up. Now, there is on your mode dial a way to defeat the flash because sometimes cameras, the flash pops up too often and it's a real problem. But you'll notice that there is a lightning bolt with a line through it. That turns your flash off if you don't want it to fire. So if you're in a museum or someplace and you don't want flash or photographing a concert, they don't allow flash, that's the mode that you will use to defeat the flash. Okay, so uh, some cameras have pretty involved flash menus. This is a Pocket Lumix, and you can see that there are five flash settings. So when I press the lightning bolt button, um, I get these. Uh, for the purpose of this assignment, we're going to be in forced flash on. So we're gonna put the flash on whether the camera needs it or not. All right, so our pop-up flash isn't very strong compared to sunlight, so we have to be less than 10 feet from our subject for the flash fill technique to work. You can see the surfer, I'm you know two arm lengths away, and also this guy playing the steel drum on the bottom, and you can see the big difference it makes in uh, filling up the shadows. This is the assignment, and there are 10 photographs required for this assignment. We can only do this in bright sunlight, so I'm not sure we'll get to it on Friday unless we have some bright sunlight. So the sun is at the camera operator's back in figure A, and we see that there's harsh light in figure A on the right-hand side and flash fill on the left. That's 
the same exposure basically, but I popped up the flash. So on the left hand side, you can see that the flash is operating in figures A, B, C, and D. And uh, the diagram on the right shows the camera position in relationship to the sun. So we're gonna produce these photographs and shrink them down and we're just gonna cover up the PDF file of this assignment that I'm sending to you. So you don't have to put in the type or anything. You're just gonna put in your photograph over these photographs. You just start with a base layer and drop it into PowerPoint and then you just size them and put them on. See in figure B, I have put those photographs of my wife just on top of the existing photographs. So you can cover up my ugly face with a pretty one. If it's sunny, we'll go outside and do this flash assignment today. That's all for the flash fill assignment. I'll see you in class.